Thanks for staying with us. The Nigeria Labour Congress NLC criticized the IMF for uh, denying uh, responsibility in Nigeria's recent fuel subsidy removal, calling the denials insincere given the IMF's history of promoting subsidy cuts that lead to socioeconomic hardships. NLC President Joa Jairo highlighted the IMF's failure to acknowledge the negative effects of its policies, dismissing its recommendation of social protections as inadequate amidst rising costs and limited, limited government support. The NLC urged Nigerians to prioritize economic independence from IMF-influenced austerity measures, even threatening to call for IMF and World Bank withdrawal if their policies continue to harm the nation's economy. Our guest this morning is Ms. Dr. Martin Morgan, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Doctor. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, my brother. So how is it? Well, it's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. We survive in Nigeria. Every week in Nigeria now is like one, one year. So, <laughs> like you said, off camera, <laughs> Happy New Year <laughs> to you. Okay. Well, IMF is denying a responsibility. Yes, uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I heard your intro. So that was why I wanted to even uh, look at it in that way uh, from what NLC is saying. Yes. At least uh, for once, I, should, I will align with NLC based on the fact that uh, what they are looking at. If somebody said, uh, maybe you can just dive into that discussion uh, uh, if I can do a preamble. Yes, go ahead. The, the, the World Bank and AMF, which are all known as the Brentwood institutions, we are not created to the, to the benefit of the third world. They are created, are uh, put into place for the dominance to perpetuate the Western dominance and they influence the developing countries, which include Africa and the developing world. So if you look at it very well, even they went to an extent of the attempt to promote the new liberal liberalism, which in one way had advanced free market deregulations, ideologies, uh, comparative interests of Western uh, corporation companies. If you look at it very well, some of these policies are not very much in tandem in developing most of the African countries and in the third world countries. They undermine the national sovereignty of most of these African countries and the third world countries. We will have on record that their policies have never been useful. I quote me, their policy has never been useful for the third world countries, for Af uh, even the Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, even the Asian countries, some of them. They, they never uh, uh, promote industrialization. They rather they, they keep on promoting poverty and inequality in the economies and siphoning for the Western world. So if uh, Mr. Jero, for once, he has said that, that the IMF policies are not helping us, I think uh, for me as a person, I, I, I tend to align with him because we know that the, the, the IMF and their own structural adjustment programs and the conditionalities they bring into some of these countries are not very much in tandem to the economic development. They talk about the de de deregulating some of these sectors. But specifically, let's look at the oil sector. Like what he's trying to say. You and I live in this country. We saw what happened in 1990 when the SAP came. We saw how it affected. And you see that the refineries in it. It never worked. The uh, petroleum industrial bill. What have we seen? We have not been able to. Uh, they help in incapacitating the countries and creating more corruption. Corruption, most of the corruption and the poverty tendencies uh, is as a result of these nefarious and nebulous policies that are not in tandem to developing the third world countries, not African countries. You can see that more than 11 African countries are suffering because of these IMF policies and the World Bank policies, which is not helping them at all. 11 African countries, talking about the Latin America also, we see them. So for me, for Ajiro to have said that, the, NL, the NLC president has said that, I am in tandem with him that, yes, for them to have not neglected that to tell us that the petroleum crisis in Nigeria is an internal affair, it's a domestic affair. Let me quote the word use, domestic affair. For me, just a real shit in a way, I cause you to have crisis, then I wash my hands off. I think that is the situation I see with the IMF. And but, but all these things you are saying, 
we cannot say those in government do not know. So why do we still cling to this IMF and World Bank? And is it because of the enticement of borrowings that they can give to us? And that borrowing, how good is it for our economy? Because it seems to be impoverishing us and it's not helping us achieve anything. So why are we still clinging to them as much as we are doing? Honestly, for me, we are not borrowing anything, extracted and taken away from Africa and from most of these countries. Like you talk about the officials, because most of the multinational companies they are now using to exploit and explore Africa to the detriment of our own development. Some of these political leaders who are there involved are cronies and chairmen of some of these parastatas. We see now this is what is happening, and we saw it in every country. It's happened in many countries, not only in Nigeria. So this is the problem we are having. That is why most of the Africa, most of the countries now in the world are changing to look at other alternatives, like the BRICS and the rest coming into onstream to ensure that we see that some of these branch school institutions are not helping the third world countries. They are not meant for third world country. They are to impoverish third world country. What happened to Brazil? What happened to Indonesia? What happened to Pakistan? What happened to most of these countries? What about in Africa, Nigeria, Ghana? What happened to Kenya, Zimbabwe? We all saw those type of uh, nemesis falling on them. So the, the political class, like what a Professor Pio, uh, Lumumba will say, they, they, they end up having our own leaders as teacup boys, and they accept whatever comes in because they keep on borrowing, but they are not being able to enhance. Why are our refineries not working? Is it, should I say it's IMF and World Bank? Because some of the regulation and the policy put in place, pre-market thing, we are not being able to implement them. So it's one way or the other, you look at that, they are also helping us. So they are becoming like cronies because they are working on because the neo-colonialism. This is the impact we are having today. That is why we are suffering in Africa. That is why Africa remains underdeveloped. But do you think, yeah, it reminds me of the book, How uh, European Underdeveloped Africa. But do you think that this, um, what do you think that we, we can break away from this apron string of the IMF and the World Bank? And if we can, what do you think, what measures do you think will be put in place before that can happen? First of all, for me, we can break away. Most of these African countries are breaking away. What is happening to BRICS? You know, there's this movement called BRICS. Yes. What, what are they doing? They are trying to break away. And, and they are trying to de-dollarize the, the USD dollar, the, the, the money. The, uh, uh, the dollar, the, the currency are being used for the international country. We can break away. We need to just have some policy leaders who can take the bull by the horn and look at their straight eyes and tell them, look, guys, enough is enough. This institution were used to restore Europe after the devastating impact of the World War the brent school institutions. They are not meant to develop Africa. And this is why we ask, we want to have some leaders who can look at them in the straight in the eyes and tell them no. But now we are moving to African Development Bank and other machineries that yes, they can help us in facilitating some of the issues. Because some of these policies introduced by the World Bank and IMF, they are never helped most countries. I can tell you vividly that Algeria in 1994 suffered the same impact, and nothing is going on. We saw Angola, 1995, nothing came out. So Ethiopia, Egypt, top class of Kenya. Now you see Nigeria also. We are here because this is the leadership. Argentina, what happened to Argentina? What happened to Peru? What happened to Brazil, Ecuador, Indonesia, Malaysia? Then Malaysia break away from certain area and developing the internal resources. But we are not been able to get people. We will not take the decision and say, let's look at these guys straight in the eyes and tell them enough is enough. Let us utilize. Why are our refineries not working? Why do we keep on collecting money? Is it IMF again? So you see that there are a lot of uh, pipelines and cronies. I use the word cronies because the, the World Bank objective of creating is new colonization. They have to set up this new colonization policy into, to promote it and in the name of new liberalism. There's nothing like liberalism. Nothing. There's nothing like liberalism. You just mentioned the BRICS. So we just have to change our mindset. You just mentioned the BRICS. BRICS okay. has uh, Russia in it. It has South Africa in it and so many other countries that are uh, sort of like rebelling against the West, rebelling against America in particular and all that. 
Uh, but what, do you see African nations being equal in this BRICS uh, block uh, than they were uh, when they were interacting more with the West? Because Russia is there. I don't see South Africa uh, being bigger or equal with Russia. I, don't, I just don't see it. I don't know whether it's going to happen. But do you think the relationship in the BRICS block will be better than what we have with the Western nations right now? Yeah, for me, I, I have that belief in the sense that uh, we need to de-dollarize the, the dollar. Their relationship will not be where we can determine and say this is what we want. If Africa was to stand, the African Development Bank that we have, we have what us in Abidjan, which is headed by our brother, uh, Dr. Adewumi Adeshina, mm. is a strong institution that if Africa were all united and group up ourselves without going to the appendages of the West, we should be able to manage all our issues through those, those banks and other developmental agencies we have therein. Because we have this neo-colonialist ideology that we cannot do anything on our own except the white man comes in. Look at our simple, take Nigeria simple football. People are clamoring for the white skin coach. Where are the black man is doing the result? So you cannot see the mental, the mentality we are having. So for me, the BRICS, I, I, I support the BRICS because it's going to be a parallel uh, uh, block to some of this IMF and war. But they come to your African country and tell our leaders stories and we start clapping for, mm. and for them. Like the last time the World Bank man came say, Nigeria, can you, can, you, can you imagine that? It's not there. I want you to point to me five African countries, one in Asia or Latin America, the IMF and World Bank have sustained to their economic dependency. To independence, sorry. I want you to mention, do you know have anyone on record, sir? Hmm. It's, a, it's, it's a dicey situation. I don't know, because some people are afraid that, you know, uh, bricks may just be like uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul or from fry pan to fire or one and the same uh, because you will have countries, white man countries, for lack of a better word, still ruling over the black <laughs> Africa. Uh, and that is a problem to, to a lot of people. Like now, these people we are running to might just take advantage of again and we'll just see that the same thing we are running away from is the same thing that we are going to get when we get there. That's the fear. And I don't know if you think that is not valid. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a fear. It's a fear. It's a fear in the sense that I keep on asking ourselves, what stops us in Africa, African uni uh, Union, after since 1963 up till now, we've not been able to stand economically. Why? Why is this so? Look at the reg regional blocks. We have a Comesa, the market, we have a COAS, we have a CEMAC. Why have we not been able to stand into a point that we can be able to see that, yes, we can stand at least, we decide, make big decisions. We, we stand on a negotiation path and decide that this is what we want. Not them telling us. Because they are taking advantage on the chaotic situations and where our infrastructures are not working, the corruptions we are having, the NMPC that without the, a regulated framework in, in country, for their own advantage. And this is why I think uh, NLC, for once, they have said something that some of us agree with them. Because if we are able to do that, we should be able to stand. And back to your question of BRICS, and if there's not another fear, my brother, we can do that, but let's try it. If it doesn't work, then we have to work on that alternative. But my concern is that when they ship all these African leaders to either Beijing, or New York and go and give them tea to drink. They come back and they forget whatever is it. Because most of the documentations and more of the treaty they sign, they hardly read it into to, to really digest and understand what are the arrangements and the clauses that host you for tomorrow. These are the problems we have with the leadership in Africa. Yeah. Um just just so something why why after a series of words? Yeah, just something maybe unrelated or maybe it's a conspiracy theory. Let me mention some of the names in Africa uh, that the people who wanted to show that Africa can be as big as any other nation. 
uh, the, the Thomas Sankaras of this world, uh, we, don't, we know how it ended. The Muammar Gaddafi of this world, we know how it ended. Now look at what uh, Libya is, a ghost of itself. And you mentioned the word, uh, enough is enough. The only person I heard saying enough is enough of this influence uh, from the West is a leader that we brand today as the worst leader, uh, the one who pilfered the most in Nigeria, Sania Bacha. As soon as he made that statement that all this influence, influence from the Western nations, enough is enough, I'm not sure he lasted more than three months. He ate an apple, wherever the apple came from and all that. So I'm just giving you examples of yeah, people, yeah. of leaders who had wanted to stand up for Africa. Even the people who talked about the African Union and all that, we know how they, they ended up. So maybe that is part of the palpable fear uh, that if you want to speak up, something happens. And then we are now allowing them to install puppets that will always speak for them rather than against them. Yeah, you are right. You are right. That is always the risk of other leadership. That is why it's a long walk to freedom. It's a long walk to freedom in the sense that, but then, you have to take a walk first. Just like the names you mentioned, Captain Thomas Sankara, he brought in this ideology that we can now move Patrice Lumumba, Gaddafi, and uh, recently our former president, Abacha, who said enough is enough, mm. and he ate the mysterious apple. Yes. But the question, of, the question here is that, they use the guys at home. The rat outside will not come and steal from the church, except the one inside and come inside. So this is why I was talking about the, mind, the mindset and the mentality of some of our people at the corridors of power and some of those advocate agencies who are there. Brain. Imagine you are doing an meeting and you see all the white guys are in the hall. And many of our, our Africans attend the European Union meetings. That is the question we keep on asking ourselves. So these are some of these issues that we need to really understand. We are not, we are not against the white, but if you are giving us a political independence after the Bismarck uh, conference that they share Africa as it a sharing cake, it, they, they only gave us the flag independence and not the economy in, independent. That is why they keep on having these colonies who are working for them and to keep on creating their own employment up there. And we here down here, we are suffering. That is why we see a lot of our African brothers start dying in the, on the, in the Mediterranean. They, they and, yeah. and at the end of the day, they say they are giving you it. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. What they are, most of them are doing is just because we are not being able to have the willpower to say, no, enough is enough. That let us do Africa. By 2050, Africa is, is destined to feed the whole world. So why is agriculture not working in Africa? Why are those things not working? Why is even Nigeria that the whole world look at after independence with a great expectation? I remember the then head of state general go and say the problem in Nigeria is not the money, but where to spend it. Mm. Why is it not as of today? We are not having a situation for refineries, none of them is working. Why are we not able to have a, a, a concrete framework in the petroleum and oil industry? It's because of those IMF and the cronies. What happened to their own colony? Because they use some of these so-called multinational agencies or companies to come and implant themselves to their own. Interest. They don't come with any. They came. They just come with a briefcase, and they use some of our our brothers daring and tell you, fine. Since the national wage is seventy thousand, let us give us two hundred thousand naira. And the man will say very well. He betrays. That is the question we are talking about. Hmm. But the fear is still there. But it's not that it's not doable. Me, I believe in African Development Bank. African Development Bank policies and other in, in multilateral, we should be negotiating one-on-one, -on -one, not then deciding on what for us to negotiate. That is my concern about our African leadership. Okay. And we should stop dancing around. You should be able to look them up and say, no, this is not what is sustainable for us. You should be able to do A, B, C, for the people in the rural area. Okay. Look at the developing economies. All Brazil right. took up, they said no, they broke up, said no, let us do something. And Brazil is up there. Okay, well, uh, we do hope that uh, we'll start to recognize our potential and the power that we hold as Africa, as a continent, as a black nation, as a black people, and be able to know that we can fight our own battles better than how it's been dictated to us by external influences. We'd like to thank you, Dr. Martin Morgan, for coming on the show this morning and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Any moment. Mm -hmm.
Africa must be free. Amen. <laughs> We've been talking with Dr. Martin Morgan, a public affairs analyst, and we were looking at the influence of IMF and World Bank and how it is making Nigeria, and especially, uh, especially Nigeria and other African and developing countries, uh, to be poorer than prospering. Okay, that's the end of the breakfast this morning. We thank you for having that breakfast with us. We do hope that you'll join us again tomorrow uh, from 7 o'clock to uh, 9.45 or 9.50 for another edition of the program. In the meantime, on behalf of the entire uh, breakfast family, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thank you for being there.